Hey guys, it's Mrs. Chefcheck. Today we're going to take a look at solving equations with parentheses in them. In particular, we'll use the distributive property to help us figure out the value of x. All right, let's take a look at our first equation with the distributive property. I'm going to begin like I always do and drawing my line down the center. And then I have to look at what this equation is actually saying. This says that I have two groups of 4x plus 7. So I have two 4x's and I have two 7's. And so the way that I kind of show how I'm simplifying this is I draw my little arrows over the top and I say, okay, I'm doing 2 times 4x. And then I'm going to be adding 2 times 7. Oops, I'll stick with blue here. 2 times 7. And all of that is equal to 62. We haven't done anything different on the right-hand side right now. Okay, now let's simplify this. I have 2 times 4x, and we know that that is 8x. And then 2 times 7 is just good old 14. And that's going to be equal to 62 when we add those together. At this point, this equation looks a lot like the ones we've been solving. And we're going to solve it using our normal method of getting that variable all by itself and moving everything else to the opposite side. So right now I have 8, oops, sorry. I have 8x on one side, um, but I also have that plus 14 over there. So I need to get rid of that plus 14. And to do that, I have to do the opposite, or the inverse, which is to minus 14. That's going to let me get 8x by itself over here. But what you do on one side, you have to make sure you're showing that you do on the other side. And when I do 62 minus 14, I'm going to get an answer of 48. And then finally, I have 8 times x equals 48. So to show how I get my x, I have to divide both sides by how many x's I have. And in this case, I have 8 of them. So I divide both sides by 8 to get x equals 6. All right, now I could go back in and substitute it in to check. I'm not going to do that right now because what I'm going to do is show you an alternate method for solving the same equation. It doesn't always work quite so nice, but it will on this particular problem. Okay, um, so same equation, method two. Another way you can solve this where you're not actually using the distributive property is to realize that this says two times 4x plus 7. And since this is all grouped together and being multiplied by 2, what we can do is we can actually divide this whole left side by 2. And so if we have 4x plus 7 times 2 divided by 2, those 2s cancel out. But if we do it on the left, that's right, we have to do it on the right. I should have put my line there. All right, so now what's left on the left side is just 4x plus 7. And over on the right, 62 divided by 2 is 31. Now I'm going to subtract 7 off both sides to get my x's isolated. And I have 4x equals 24. And finally, always divide by how many x's you have to get that x alone. And I have x equals 6. So again, it's a second way to get to that same answer. Uh, this original one, I used the distributive property, and then on this one, I just undid this multiplication in my first step. All right, let's try another one. Uh, we have two groups of 2y minus 7 equal to 18. Now, something you'll notice, I hope, is that we have a subtraction sign here. I would highly recommend that every time you see that, you go in and turn that right away to adding the opposite. And I'll tell you why here as we distribute. Okay, so I'm doing 2 times 2y, and that is 4y. And then, since I turn that into addition, I can bring down a plus sign. And then I have 2 times a negative 7. And 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. And I can set that equal still to 18. Again, I forgot my line, but there you go. Um, so from here, I have 4y plus negative 14 equals 18. So I have my y's on one side. Now I need to get rid of this minus 14 or plus negative 14. And to do that, I'm going to add a positive 14 because that's going to cancel out and leave us with just 4y over here. But we know if we do it on the left, we've got to do it to the right. And that will leave us with an answer of 32. So 4 times y equals 32. Our final step, divide by how many y's we have. 
but if I do it on the left, I must do it on the right, and I find out that y equals 8. And again, I can go back and check my solution by substituting it back into my original equation. And I'm going to rewrite it how it started out as minus 7, just so I make sure I didn't make any errors there. And then I'm going to simplify this thing, this equation, uh, mostly on the left side here to find out if it equals 18. And if it does, then I know I did it correct. Now I'm going to use the order of operations as I simplify this by starting in parentheses. So we have 2 times 8, that's 16, and 16 minus 7, that equals 9, and then I have to bring down that times 2 still. 2 times 9 gives me 18, and it does check because the other side of my equation was 18. So my solution is y equals 8. The final equation we'll do together is in front of you. So... Let's go ahead and get going. So we have 2 times 4x minus 9. Again, I'm going to go in and turn that subtraction to adding the opposite. And that's going to help me as I distribute. 2 times 4x is 8x plus 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. And that's all equal to 14. So I want to get rid of that negative 18, and I'm going to do that by adding positive 18. But what I do to the left, I must do to the right, and now I have 8x equals uh, 32. And final step is divide by how many x's we have in this problem, and so we have x equals 4. We're going to go back in and check our solution. We have 2 times 4 times 4 minus 9 equals 14. And again, I took this, oops, I took, what did I take? This solution, and I substituted it in over here. Let's see if it equals, if the left side and the right side balance. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 9 is 7. And 2 times 7 is 14. And if I check, that does equal the right-hand side. So our answer of x equals 4 is correct. Now it's your turn to try a couple. I'd like you to pause the video, work them out on paper, and then come back to see how you did. Ready to go? Let's check our first one. For the first one, we get an answer of V equals 7. If you did not get that, go back through your work and check it with mine and see if you can spot where you went wrong. If you did get it correct, let's check your next one. And then our last one, we get an answer of x equals 6. If you didn't get that, my recommendation is to go back to this very first step. This is usually where people make their error, is in uh, forgetting to bring down that negative with the 5. So uh, as always, let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help, and um, have fun practicing.